Excellent. Al Johnson. Al what? Johnson. What the fuck? This isn't Al me. <laughs> Kyle Johnson. Everyone had. Hello, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to Awesome Hardware. <laughs> This is our live show. We do it every week on Tuesday evening at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time on twitch.tv slash awesomehardware. And then we upload each half of the show independently. Uh, you're watching my half of the show, which is on my channel, Paul's Hardware. The first half of this show, which is episode 31, is on Kyle's channel, which is uh, Awesome Sauce Network. Yes. Um, or youtube.com slash awesome sauce news. Right. And uh, we've had a great time so far. I'm very um, distracted right now. Kyle's a little distracted because there's somebody, there's, there's, a, there's a Facebook page called Kyle Johnson. It's, it's not me. Got a picture of Kyle's computer. But uh, apparently my alter ego, who's not really me, has 121 friends. Oh. Well. And a lot of them are... Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't with a name like that? A lot of them are fairly attractive women, which I'm sure aren't real. There you all. go. Which I'm very jealous um, of. Nori's here with us as well. Hi, Nori. Uh, she's popping up to say hello because she's t bored. She is bored. She's like, what are you guys doing? Clearly nothing important. You should pay attention to me. We'll be, That's kind of what we'll be interviewing her later on yeah. uh, the status of HBM memory with AMD and NVIDIA. And and okay. She'll have a lot of insightful things to yeah. say. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have wonderful, fantastic things to talk about today. That we do. Um, first off, I want to distribute some Johnsons or redistribute some Johnsons. Yes. We ended Kyle's half of the show by saying some big shout-outs to you guys who may be buying stuff from our stores. I want to say that again. Uh, Michael, Keon, Andrew, and Noel. Uh, Big Johnson's to all you, all four of you fine folks who uh, purchased some things, whether they were shirts or whether they were mugs or glasses, uh, you guys are fabulous people. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, I'd like to say also a thank you to Josh, Christopher, uh, Andrew, um, Kayon? Kayon? Kayon, I think it's Kayon. And just re very recently, Randy as well uh, for picking up a CPU cooler shirt. Randy. Thank you guys so much. Um, do we have other announcements? Randy gets a double Johnson. Randy gets an immediate double Johnson right here at double the beginning of the Johnson! show. Randy, thank you. Thank Ooh. you for holding back. It takes it takes a lot to hold back on it that does. Johnson. It really does. Just to wait to release it at right just the right time. Uh, guys, if you're interested in, in clothing and supporting our channels, mine's store.paulsherbert.net. Someone's saying audio problems, please fix. Audio There's problems? A couple people saying audio. There uh, were some uh, crickets that just popped in. Hmm. Are you guys hearing them crickets? Could you guys please specify what kind of audio problems yeah. there are? That would give know. us a better idea of how to really fix it. There was honestly a cricket that started chirping like a minute ago. It sounded like a screaming. It doesn't thing. seem like that. They're saying, yeah. fix audio, please. Oh my god. But we also have people saying it sounds fine, so that's difficult to say. Please move audio Kyle's has a lot of mic. static. Move Kyle's mic out of frame. They really don't like it here. You like your mic? It's barely in frame. Yeah. Uh, there is static noise. There's going to be some static noise. Let me see if I can eliminate some of that right now. Is that the problem? That any better? They would rather have us suffer in the heat I know. of Southern California weather. Well, the sun has gone down and the moon has come up and long ago somebody let... No. Left of the, cup. the sun has gone down, so uh, I just turned the AC off. That might help. <laughs> Somebody's like, oh my god, that's so much better. <laughs> see? Yeah. Already? If it... Yeah, that oh, was, yeah, so they're just, they're, just you're hearing the AC in the background. All right. Uh, give us another, like, day or two. Weird no. that they didn't hear it, though, for my half the show. I think it's because we warned them profusely at the beginning that we had it on. I guess and so. It was also earlier. We should have prefaced yeah. this. It's September now. It's been, it's still supposed to be, like, close to 100 this week, but give us a few more weeks. And we Let's explain to you how Southern California seasons work. Yeah. In Southern California, there's this all the time. September and October, it's like, hey, let's pretend like it's the middle of summer still <laughs> that's what they do uh, <laughs> um okay kyle has a new shirt guys check it out it's called it's the stay positive shirt i do it's a, it's a fantastic little design so check that out new shirt on his uh, uh store and um if you're interested in helping us out we're actually going to be making some awesome hardware shirts yes we are and uh kyle do you have the link did, did you make a thing yet An awesome hardware link no, no, we were going to ask people. Oh, I'm so, oh blah, never no. mind. I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting what we were talking about five minutes ago. Okay, so what we're looking for is something to make an awesome hardware logo. Yes. Right now we have the awesome hardware logo that you can see right down there. But there's a problem with that. It's got our faces. When you put that on a shirt, though, yeah. like Paul and I, our faces it's become just like, nipples. It's just like face nipples <laughs> right there. 
And whereas that would be fine in in, and highly in, arousing. in a very s small number of circumstances, yeah, we uh, we yeah, it's a better logo for like the back collar. So, so we want to find a central logo. We're looking for an awesome front. hardware logo. Yeah, and Some, we need your help. Something that can maybe fit within the square that we can use on like the channel. It'll be yes. the channel logo as well. Sure. And we're looking for submissions from you guys. So. All we're asking right now is, folks, don't don't like go crazy. Don't invest hours and hours of time. Just if you have something, an idea, we'll maybe do a little mock up. Send it our way on Twitter, and our Twitter handles are down below. Right. Do not and, put it um, in chat. Yeah. Don't don't because post it in we chat. won't read it. We're and we're gonna the show. we're put gonna it keep an Twitter. eye out for those uh, this next week. Uh, if we happen to use your idea, we will be compensating you somehow. Right. We're not going to say specifically, but you'll be getting something of value. Let's just put it that way. Are we, are we um, throwing a, a mini contest here, Paul? No, don't say that word. In fact, you should not have said that word. For, forget that Kyle said that word. This is not a contest. We're throwing a mini No, it's idea nothing. Off. We're just asking some people to send us pictures. It's an That's idea thon. All. We're not guaranteeing anything. There's nothing legally binding involved here. I spent too much time working at Newegg and having to worry about like, Paul's a little paranoid stuff. at this point. Just, just send us your best ideas, us ideas for ideas. An, an awesome hardware logo to either Paul's hard, Paul Hardware <laughs> at Paul Hardware on his Twitter account or on my Twitter account at Forever Kyle. Send, send your best logo idea for this show, That's and if we pick do. yours, we might give you something. Indeed. That's all we're saying. Um, okay. Go for it. Uh, beer check here. I need to give a big shout out to our beer sponsor. Absolutely. Uh, which Kyle talked uh, his way into earlier today. Uh, we're being sponsored by One Stop Liquor. Uh, located yes, in La Habra, and uh, you can follow their Instagram here at one underscore stop underscore liquor, yes. and they have pictures of alcohol. Uh, yes, but they, they also provided the alcohol that we're drinking right now, so we want to say a big thank you to them. One stop liquor, cheers! Cheers, cheers to you thank guys. you guys. Wait, cheers on that one. Hey. Mm. You know, you know what's funny, Paul? Just really quick, I want to tell the story because I think okay. it's awesome. I, I walked into the liquor store today, One Stop Liquor. Uh, like I always do every Tuesday to pick up some beer for the show, and I completely forgot my wallet. Yeah. And so I couldn't physically. I had the beer on the, the like on the counter at the cash register. I was like, I I, I don't know my wallet. Would you, hey, do you guys <laughs> you guys cool with like live shows? You guys cool <laughs> with that? Like you know, totally speaking the language. But the guy there was so chill. He was like, dude, that'd be great if you guys could boost our help boost our Instagram page or whatever. So he let he gave me forty dollars or so worth of beer, the beer that we're drinking now and that we have been for the last hour or two, for free. Um, they're just super nice guys, and they really just care about the quality of the beer and the, just the the wide range of, of, of variety that they offer at uh, One Stop Liquor. So thank you guys, I really appreciate that. We do. Uh, I'm drinking Chocolate Oak Aged Yeti, uh, which is an Imperial Stout by Great Divide Brewing Company. How is it, by the way? Uh, this is fantastic. Good. I've had this, I think, once before, and um, th it's not like overpoweringly chocolate. That was my concern with like these chocolate things. Is like, yeah. is it going to be like crazy sweet? Because I don't like crazy sweet. But, yeah, uh, same this here. Is very, very well balanced. I've got a Woot Stout, which is actually a collab beer from Stone, as well as uh, Will Wheaton. No, oh. would you know? Really, he's uh, involved. Yeah, it's it's actually funny because they put the the the, the guy, the owner of uh, Stone, actually puts the whole story of how he met Will Wheaton on, the on here and how <laughs> this whole freaking collab beer came to be. That's... It's really quite interesting. I think that's probably also why Danny, the 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 uh, owner of One Stop Liquor, was like, "Do you need any help picking out beer?" Because I was sitting there for five minutes just reading the label, and he's like, "You've been here for like half an hour, dude. You haven't even." <laughs> Are you okay? Look, there's backstory but involved. Will Wheaton helped fabricate this beer, so it's good stuff. Fabulous. Awesome. Okay, um, let's move on to my first segment, right? Yes, sure. we're ready for that. Okay, yeah. which is going to be tech news, as it always tech is. News. I have more on good tech news. Tech news. Uh, it's going to be fabulous. We're going to start off talking a little bit about Steve Tech News. AMD. Oh. Not just AMD. What is this oh. pop-up thing here? It's stupid. Oh. AMD and the uh, R9 Fury X2. Mmm. Indeed. Mm. Indeed. You had first dibs on all the stories. Why did you not choose this one? Because I wanted to give. I don't. You know, you just wanted to give me something. I wanted to give you to a little about. bit something. A little something. All right. Something. The R9 Fury X2. Now this is a working title. First off, the R9 Fury X2. But I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop here on this delectable photo. Does this mean twice as much coil wine? Well, it's a, it, come on, Kyle. What are you, an Nvidia fanboy? Nope. I'm I'm just someone who reads the articles. You just read the articles, okay? Um, all right, here's I'm gonna stop on this picture of what is purportedly an R an, an R9 Fury X2. All right. Now again, that, that's a working title. 
Um, AMD has not come out and said that is what this card will be called. Just the reviewers are calling it that because it falls in line with past cards. Fair enough. They're prepping it for the holiday season. That's Q4, which is a pretty wide range. But they said fall originally when they came with the Fury X. Right. And they were like, fall, and in fall we'll have the Fury X2 or whatever it's going to be called. Um, I don't. When does fall end? We're, we're in fall now, right? Fall ends in November. November. Okay. So uh, that's uh, so yes. maybe we'll see it in in the first half of Q4. Or maybe they'll push it to later in Q4. Either way, though, they're going to definitely want to get it out by sometime in mid-November because, I mean, they, they got to catch that holiday season rush. Right. Um, but what we're seeing here is purportedly an actual picture of the board. And beyond that, there's just more speculation as to what's going to be included. Although the speculation can be fairly accurate because we already know what's in a Fury X. Right. So you take that, you double it, you get a Fury X2. It's just on a single board. Uh, what AMD is really going for here is something that they've had for quite some time, which is the title of the world's fastest graphics card. Right. Uh, and they've actually managed to, to, to maintain that over time, even though they haven't necessarily had the world's fastest single GPU graphics card, because NVIDIA hasn't always come out with dual GPU versions of their highest end, gra highest end GPUs, because they're pretty big. So anyway, there's no two GPU version, for instance, of a 980 Ti or a Titan X. Uh, and until NVIDIA comes out with that, then chances are if AMD beats them to the punch with a dual Fury X GPU, then they will have the fastest single graphics card on the market right. with two GPUs. True. Um, beyond that, there's, there's like specs down here again, which is all just exp extrapolated from taking two Fury Xs and putting it on the same card. Sure. Um, but yeah, you should have 8,192 stream processors, 128 GCN compute units, 128 ROPs, uh, 512 texture map mapping units. Just double double the Fury X. Double is the Fury X. Double the, Fury I'm X. guessing there's been no price laid out for this. No, it's all card it's all yet. still speculation, and okay. nobody really knows. Uh, but you would get eight gigs of HBM memory, four gigs for each chip. And then there would still be a question as to the DirectX 12 performance of something like this, and will DirectX 12 actually allow us in a dual GPU environments, pool the resources of each GPU, right. and use that HBM memory, and actually have an 8, eight gig HBM chip? Because we've yes. already seen what 4 gigs of HBM can do, right? and it's pretty impressive. It's, it's, Imagine it's more that. than you might expect from a 4 gigs of memory, but, but the bandwidth is so... Massive, you know, right. it's just four thousand ninety six yeah. bits. Crazy, impressive that it's way. Ridiculous. What do you think, Kyle? Are, would you go? Would you? Would you upgrade Hotline to to if if you let's say if EK sponsored the water blocks? If EK sponsored the water blocks, and you sure. could get two Fury X twos, would you go for it? Of course, you would. I mean, that would that would significantly outperform my two nine eight Ti's. Just easily um and i i am totally i i really do like amd hardware just as much as i like nvidia hardware um and i think it's i almost feel like including amd hardware in your system makes you more of a, a rare breed it seems like you're more of an underdog supporter yeah. than than going for the masses when you're when you have amd hardware um rocking in your system so i kind of like that underdog mentality and I really do. I am cheering AMD on as they as they kind of uh, are stealing back a little bit of their GPU discrete GPU market share, mm -hmm. as I saw in another article that I didn't actually use in my half of the show. But I didn't use it. They either. are gaining a little bit more back um, of the market share in the discrete GPU uh, arena from from Nvidia, which yes. is nice to see. And I think that's just because a lot of the results from their their huge Fury line, as well as like the R9 Nano have come out and I think they're making a bit of a comeback even though it's slow it's it's definitely you know it's it's slow but surely uh, type of thing and I wouldn't be opposed at all to rocking a four not a four-way but a, a quad that GPU, would be quad crossfire quad, quad GPU crossfire in my system I was trying at all I was trying to make sure that that's clarified for anyone who doesn't yes. know yes very when you're talking about GPUs yes if you have like a single graphic GPU graphics card, that's one. If you have two single GPU graphics cards, that's two-way. If you have three single GPU graphics cards, that's three-way. And if you have four single GPU graphics cards, that's four-way. If you have one 
dual GPU graphics card, then you have one dual GPU graphics card. Right. I've never heard that called dual, but I don't know. Maybe <laughs> you could. Uh, if you have two dual GPU graphics card, that is quad, right. quad SLI, or quad Crossfire. Not Different four from four-way, and that's how you distinguish whether you have two dual GPU cards or four single GPU cards. Wh okay. The word way just indicates that there are that many cards as the number that precedes it. It is also the path to enlightenment. The way. It is the way. It is the four-way. Paul is inventing a new religion. Yes. You should all follow. Everyone sign up. <laughs> We're tax exempt. For for nine ninety nine. <laughs> just month. just submit your money or something. We're I don't know how we're banning encryption I don't, I don't so know, that the aliens uh, can contact. I don't know how us. religions work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, we have some other news that uh, Nvidia just dropped this morning. Boom. Um, this was one that I, I was privy to a little early on, early like, on which uh, like which I was happy happy about. Like uh, the GTX 980 for gaming laptops. You so what this. is it? A new mobile gaming graphics card? No, no, no. It's a 980. Just a straight up GTX just, 980. Just a GTX 980. Not a mobile 980. version of the card of it the is GPU. It is not a 980M. A fully fledged. It is not a 970M. There is no M involved. It is a GTX 980. That's got to be what thirty or they forty just, percent faster than a mobile version of yeah, itself, right? It is. Look at their terrible graphs here. I'm sorry, Nvidia, but tell, but put start your graphs at zero. Start your yeah, graphs at zero. I hate. I'm, always, I'm, I'm in these meetings and I'm looking at the graphs. I'm like, start Whoa. the graph at zero. Yeah. Anyway, um, what a huge improvement. Oh no, that's only like yeah. 2%. Breakthrough overclocking. No, but I, I was impressed. I was impressed. I go into some of these meetings fairly cynical, and I was fairly impressed. And if you guys want to watch my video, it's right here, uh, because I, I went there when when hung out with Logan and Kane, uh, and and video showed us this, and I was like, all right, immediately out of the gate, I was like, these got to be running at like 800 megahertz or 900 megahertz or something like that. They got to be throttling back somehow. That is not the case. Uh, in fact, they were running at 1300 to 1400 megahertz if you were overclocking them. Out of the box, they were at 11 to 1200 megahertz. Really not that far off of what the desktop GPUs are running at. Okay. Uh, NVIDIA is able to do this for a few reasons. One is that Maxwell, they really did a, a big focus on power efficiency with Maxwell. They weren't able to shrink the process node from 28 nanometers, so they were like, let's just hardcore make this as, as power efficient as possible so that's why the 980 has a TDP of one was it 160 160 or 170 mm -hmm. I forget but it's pretty low as it is yeah. um, the other thing that the that they were able to do with this is uh, they're able to take uh, two of them actually and put them in a single laptop Wow yeah so uh, MSI at least is the only one that I think that was confirmed there that has is gonna have a two-way GTX 980 so basically Arctic Panthers GPU configuration. That's nuts. In a laptop. Granted, there you can't overclock them quite as much as, as I have, but it's pretty damn close. And it makes me like so. God damn but it. I feel like this is only half the story because aren't aren't shouldn't we now expect like 5960Xs to start appearing in really high end mm -hmm. like laptops if they're going to be featuring two GTX 980 full fledged non mobile SKU CPU GPUs. In them, I mean, because when you put two of those in SLI, you're already going to be bottlenecking any like a 6700K. Yeah, a 6700K will bottleneck in games like GTA V um, well, hold or on. similar. Because look what I was, look what the Cleva was using. What? The Cleva 6700K. But 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 yes, but have you compared this system to in an actual real real world game at different resolutions? And have you seen to any what? kind of drop off? Compared to what? Compared to itself, a different I'm, CPU. I'm just saying, if if you were to benchmark this this uh, this system in a game at different resolutions, would you start to see a CPU bottleneck because the GPUs are now taking over the capacity or the abilities of a four core 6700K as no. opposed to a six core or an eight core? No, in most situations, you would not. Right. Because typically, you're running at higher resolutions, and at higher resolutions, the GPU is almost always a bottleneck. Yeah. So in order to make the CPU bottleneck uh, a bottleneck, you would need to lower the resolution in order to, to make that happen. So right. this, the CPUs that are in like that are gonna be in the in the in the because these are gonna be in high end laptops. These are all 17 inch plus. Right. These are all probably gonna cost 
I don't know, seven. I, I have no idea. I have no $4, idea what the price is. No, I'm gonna say like seventeen hundred, probably. At least is, I, I, but that's a shot in the dark, really. Would be the minimum you'd, you'd spend on something generous. like this. That's for pretty. Two nine eighties for two nine. Uh, no, I'm saying for a single nine eighty. Oh, for, oh for, okay. for a single nine eighty. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So uh, the things we didn't discuss very much during the meeting that we had with NVIDIA. Uh -huh. And uh, I had an exclusive, by the way. I had an exclusive on this. I'm the only person who posted a video on this today. <laughs> I'm joking. In the world. Everyone did. <laughs> Linus, wait, Linus did. Harbor Connects did. Tech Syndicate did. Uh, there were other, other people did too. Anyway, um, point being here, they, they didn't discuss battery life. And a few people brought that up in the comments. Battery life obviously would be a concern if you're using a not as mobile oriented uh, uh, chip. My response to that was, I can't remember the last time, well, I don't game on a laptop very much as it is, but uh -huh. I don't remember the last time that I gamed on a laptop and didn't have it plugged in. I don't think I would yeah. have the idea in my mind exactly. that I could game on a laptop right. without it being plugged <sighs> in. So granted, yes, battery life is a concern, but unless you're actually gaming with battery life, I think it'll still be okay if you're mostly doing t 2D stuff while you're not plugged in. Um, right. Heat, definitely a concern. Heat will definitely be a concern. Yeah. The, uh, the the max temperatures on these chips were 81 between 81 and 88 degrees Celsius, depending on what the manufacturer sets, and that might be a concern. So if you're gaming, here's what I'm imagining these, these to be very good for. Somebody who wants to just, I just want one computer. There are lots of people out there who are like, I don't want lots of different computers. I want one. I want a right. single thing, and that's where everything is. Sure. And I want that computer to be able to pick up and take it with me on my business trip or whatever and set up in my meeting and blah, blah, blah. But then when I get home, I want to plug that in and I want to game. And that's where True. this makes sense to me. Because right. you get home, plug it into your external monitor so you can game it maybe at 2560 by 1440 or something like that, which a 980 can totally handle. Right. Plug it into your mouse and keyboard, which are external, so your hands aren't right on top of the damn thing. And then the heat becomes less of an issue. Sure. Use some headphones and then maybe fan noise becomes less of an issue. Yeah. Granted, yes, you are making compromises here, and I personally would still prefer the desktop experience. I'm not going away from that. But the fact that this is possible with a full size, full fledged 980, and that we finally have this in a laptop graphics card without having to say, oh, yeah, but it's all cut down. Right. Oh, they call that a 980M. But really, it's like half or two thirds of the performance. So for probably uh, yeah. for the first time in maybe ever, and at the very least, a long time, people who are investing into a gaming laptop are actually going to be able to get somewhat close to a very full fledged desktop experience when gaming. Yes, indeed. Because you're no longer you can no longer have like the desktop elitist say like, well, that's a mobile 980, and it's not quite as good as the 980 in my that's system. True. That's completely gone the way of the dinosaur, and now it, they're pretty much equals, which is exciting news if you're a on-the-go gamer, I would I agree. say. Not for I everyone, agree. but pretty cool. Still plenty to be said for desktops and expandability of and, and overclocking and thermals and all that good stuff, but yes, I, th I still think it's pretty cool. And I will say that I, I, as well as Logan and Kane, all said... At the same time, we were going there kind of expecting like them to have some new VR demo or, so, or something like that. And when they s told us exactly what they had laid out, yeah. after we were able to test it and overcome some of the questions as far as like throttling and that kind of thing, right. all of us were like, that's actually <laughs> that's actually pretty damn cool. Yeah. So yeah, if you're a laptop gamer, uh, things are looking up, especially if you're in the, in the market for a new laptop. Uh, I was none of them are available. I, I was looking this morning to try to link some, and I, I couldn't find any that were actually available for sale right now, though. Right. So that's possibly another issue. All right, let's uh, move on. Jim Keller. Uh, this actually happened towards the end of last week, so this isn't the newest of news. But Jim Keller has left AMD. He is the gentleman on the far right here, sitting there in his right. black polo shirt, looking. He's a little underdressed compared to the rest of the folks in this photo. Because anyway, he's, he's leaving. He's like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, because he's like, who cares? I'm, I'm out of here. Out, baby. Just put in my two weeks. All right, so Jim Keller uh, has worked previously at AMD. He's worked for Apple. He is a CPU designer, like an architecture designer. Uh, he was largely responsible for a lot of the FX stuff that went on. What the hell are you looking at right now? I was. Is that a, a suggestion for our new logo? Yes. We should go with that. Kyle all right. Pasties. Problem solved. Kyle Pasties, I'll leave it at that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Kyle Pasties. Thank you so much. Uh, 
All right, so there's been a lot of talk about Jim Keller leaving AMD because that's just been announced. And, I mean, I'll be honest, we talked about this last uh, when, when did it, a couple years ago on a Yoked episode when he joined AMD and we're like this is exciting that. this is exciting that. we got Jim back at AMD right you know they're going to make some strides uh, and the idea is that you know probably a lot of stuff that they've been working on with Zen right. was heavily influenced or maybe directly designed by him and him leaving like what does that mean what does that mean for Zen right um, so there's a secondary article here which is written a bit more recently uh, which is talking about uh, some of the things around Jim Keller's departure and uh, AMD's position in general right now. And it basically goes over several facts surrounding Jim as a person, which is that uh, he he has held many jobs at many different companies in the past 15, 20 years. Right. Uh, that's kind of his MO. He... He's, he's, he's a creative person. He goes somewhere, he gets excited about the prospects, works for a little while, gets bored, moves on, moves to something else. Right. Um, also, uh, the CFO of AMD uh, says that the company needs a minimum of $500 million in cash to operate effectively right now. Why is cash part of the consideration here? Well, if the question here is like, is Jim Keller leaving that much of an issue or is really just money more of an issue? And that's kind of what the article is saying. Right. Uh, it's hard is, to tell. Yeah. Uh, but but no one will debate the fact that getting Zen completed and ready to go, which we're still expecting in 2015, very is much hype. absolutely critical for AMD right now. Yeah. Uh, very important, and we're not sure when we're going to see that. We're also not sure if, uh, I mean, CPU design takes a long time. Mm -hmm. Jim leaving right now might not mean like, oh, Zen might not be able to be finished. They might have gotten to the point where they're at tape out or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And you know he's leaving at the tail end of the of, of 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 what his role in that would be. Right. So there's a lot of speculation around it. Obviously, um, some are kind of siding more on the doom and gloom side of it, which is like, oh, Jim has left. AMD is doomed. Other people are saying, well, no, that might be just what Jim does, and he's probably dropped a lot of a lot of you know effort and his personal knowledge into AMD in the past couple of years he's been there. Anyway. Right. So, we'll see what happens, I guess, is, is the upshot of it. Right. Um, but really, what this article is saying is that more so than Jim Keller leaving, what AMD actually needs is money. And we talked about a little bit last week about the possibility of like a Microsoft buyout. That's all. Uh, we have no more further confirmation on that. Still waiting to see. But, um, anyway. Alright. Yep. That's that. Let's move on to a little story here about WD. WD? Uh, Western Digital. Yeah, this is this. I threw this one kind of in at the last moment, uh, but this is a Kit Guru, Guru article about WD, and uh, they're actually ditching their green drives. Okay. Yes. No more greens. So screw the environment. Yep. Is what uh, WD, WD has gone has completely decided. anti-environment here, and they hate green stuff. They will be beginning uh, the the production of oil drives in 2016. Oil drive, yes, oil based, <laughs> uh, you, designed and manufactured 20 percent exclusively with asbestos. <laughs> no, your pool boy um, will revel in the. All right, so they're not abandoning. I mean, this it says right here they're abandoning green in favor of blue. Oh. No, they're kind of combining the two lines, I guess, to match up. I guess in their eyes. Having having the green drives and having the blue drives were kind of is too confusing for people, right? Because the green drives, which are power efficient and maybe not quite as good of performance, but they're power efficient. Sure. They're also kind of on the low end of their drives. The blue drives were a little bit faster, and I generally would recommend people blue drives because I like having a little bit more speed yeah, there. I agree. It's always nice, but um, I I feel like when you combine blue and green. You don't get blue. What do you get when you combine blue? It's like you brown get like a weird or something. Brownish kind of. It's a weird kind of muddy color. It's like a poo poo color, poo brown. And so WD is coming out with their new line of poo colored drives. Oh, poo the poo line. The poo line. Been interested in, in WD's poo line for quite some time. Yes, yes you have. <laughs> I'm glad we're after partying here tonight. <laughs> I'm excited for that. Hey. We are going to after party here tonight. Anyway, so Whoa. just just so you guys know, that was a short story here. All right. Um. Here's 
Here's a random story for the end of my news segment. More people have died from selfies this year than shark attacks. Shouldn't this be in the Ojoy oh segment, Paul? Yeah, but I didn't have enough to fill out an Ojoy oh uh. oh Joy segment, so I just decided to throw this in. Plus, they have a chart. Look at this chart right here. Charts are good. Anytime you can show like an infographic on something. <laughs> Plus, you got sharks on one side, so there's the shark-related deaths on the right. It makes it look so much more legit. With eight. And then you got the cell phones, selfies, <laughs> causing deaths. Like so basically, you should be more afraid of your cell phone than you should of a shark. I was expecting these number, these analytics to be by the thousands. thousands like like 50,000, you know, shark-related deaths, but like 320,000, but it, 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 instead it's like... How many people do you think sharks kill every year? I don't know, but I wasn't expecting 8 to 12. 50,000 people die eight, by sharks every year? 8 <laughs> to really? 12 it could easily have been inversed. I feel like this is just a good, like, headline, like... You're saying it's a good what? year for selfie sticks like, oh, and a bad year for sharks. People have died from sharks. selfie sticks. What can we compare this to? What about shark shark deaths? How many shark deaths have, have, have there been? So, what, I mean, but what what's the point then? Is the point that for selfie, great... taking a selfie is dangerous or that sharks aren't as dangerous as you might have thought? Sharks are, are getting soft. Sharks need to step up their game. St sharks need sharks to step need it to up. Kill more people. Yes. I mean, what happened to the? Yes. Remember no, the '60s and the '70s when were, when Jaws were, came so out? Cute. He was relentless. I mean, look how much now. She, now he's as cute as a puppy dog like Nori. Look how much she wants me to pay attention to her. Right now. All the sharks in in the Pacific Ocean are embarrassed because their perce the perception of them in modern society has been reduced to to, to the likes of a a, 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 a comfy. Joyous little little. What is this? It's a major problem. It was a she, dog. She's a cardigan Welsh corgi. Cardigan Welsh corgi is what people call sharks these days, and they're not having it. So they wanna, you know, they're lashing out. They're lashing out, and I think, wow, my my hands are completely. She, I know. I can't even type you're also, anymore. You're also getting a nice layer of fur there on your right shoulder. Oh that's, my! That's another specialty of hers. Goodness. She's a big time shedder. How do you live? What we va we vacuum weekly? <laughs> that's is really. What do you do? It. What do you do for the drool though? Uh, the drool, you just let it dry. That's fine. <laughs> just let it dry. Okay. Uh, I'll do some extra blowing on that. All right. All right. That's uh. That's that kind of episode of Awesome Hardware this You've week. Gone that far. Okay. That's the end of the news segment. All right. Uh, what the hell am I talking about next? Oh, I know. My next segment uh, doesn't really have a title. Oh. Um. It is story time. Wait, why did you time. put that there? That's that, weird. No, I didn't. It was already there. I just All right, we got to come back to that because you put it in the wrong spot. No, it was already there. I just it's supposed it to be after the second half part. I didn't part. copy paste it. It was there. I, just, <laughs> I enlarged where it was. It was there originally. I just Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to all of you. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. Bravo. Okay. Um, yeah. Moving really along, I haven't, my next segment is called Story Time, and that's really because um, I ran out of time today. But I decided to tell you guys a story about yesterday. Right. What I did yesterday. We've already talked previously on the show about Nintendo in various capacities. Nintendo as a, uh, like, like this nostalgic, like, glowing beacon of our youths. Nintendo. Yes. Um, for many of us, grew up playing Nintendo games, platformers, Super Mario Brothers, all the other fantastic games that came out on Nintendo over the years. Right. Nintendo in its modern state, having fallen back a little bit in the competition with the other consoles that are out there, but still maintaining uh, a lot of its its. Uh, I think what made it great originally with with uh, games based on like fun gameplay, family oriented titles, that kind of thing, or what we've been also been talking about recently, the Nintendo that we're not really very happy with right now, that really has had a hard time stepping into the future of gaming and stepping into the future of the internet and sharing of information. Because Nintendo is famously, at least in the past, say, year or two, known for being really, really close-minded about allowing people to stream their games, share their content, or express, or, or, or basically share derivative works. Mm -hmm. Be that as it may, Nintendo platformer games are incredibly fun. They are. The new game, uh, Super Mario Maker, that has just come out for Wii U, I don't... I, I, Okay, according to everything I have read everywhere, is insanely fun. Is, is it really just 
you get to create your own map and play it? Is that really the only... Yes. But you, but you can do anything you want using any of the... But there have been so many games using, like that. Using Why any, is this one getting so much attention? Because you're using, uh, you're using uh, images, sounds, and gameplay elements that go back 20 or... How many years? How many years? When did Nintendo happen? 19, what year is it? 1988? 25 years. Yeah. You're using stuff that's been there for 25 years. And when you do that, and when you put the little, 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 you know, Koopa there, and you jump on him, and it makes a noise, and then you pop him, and then you pick up the shell and throw it, and whatever. And it happens the same way you remember it. I and think the mechanics are the same. It's because a lot of the people that are writing mm -hmm. reviews for games like this nowadays were in that generation when the original Super Mario and original Nintendo was still kind yes. of a big thing and still just a booming on the booming cutting edge of, of video games. They were. And I think now there's a lot of nostalgia that goes into it, but I don't see why it's getting such rave reviews just for being a game where you can create your own map. Okay. When it's when the play when the game style and the play style is exactly the same. So we will come. We'll come back to that in just okay. a second because sure. this is a topic that we're that I have a couple things arranged for. What I want to tell is a little story about what I did yesterday. And what I did yesterday was I got crazily distracted from what I should have been doing, which is making videos and everything. <laughs> uh, and I was distracted by Super Mario Maker. Now uh, there is a game, uh, a speedrunner, and a modder named Pangea Panga. He's crazy. Uh, he's a crazy guy, and he's the guy we've actually talked about an episode or two ago, or in a, a last episode, because he would actually mod the ROMs for Nintendo games in order to create speed runs or custom levels um, that he would play, and he'd post online, and people enjoyed them. However, like, crap ton of stuff on his YouTube channel was shut down by copyright infringement violation claims by uh, Nintendo under the DMCA. We thought that was pretty lame. However, Pangea, or Pang, Pangea Panga has since recreated or sort of restarted doing stuff within Super Mario Maker for one, rather than using his modding ROMs. Secondly, he apparently is going along with with Nintendo's uh, scheme of partnering with Nintendo, which they're requiring for like YouTube channels and that kind of thing, in order to display their content, which gives Nintendo uh, a disproportionately large amount of the revenue from the channels which uh, we have expressed disagreement for all that aside though here's what happened yesterday first off uh Pangea Panga made a level uh the level was called bomb voyage bomb voyage and this is the hardest mario level ever to exist and i'm going to play it right now and i'm going to really hope that this video doesn't get flagged by nintendo anyway here it is starting out the concept with these levels, kind of what the, the idea that I get is if you guys are familiar with Super Meat Boy, for example, yes, it's an insanely hard game. Right. It's designed around the idea that you start out, there are things that happen that you will clearly kill you, and as you go along, you have to learn them so that you anticipate them coming along in order to get through the level. Right. So you can see here just the crazy amount of stupid things he's doing. A lot of them involve bombs, of course, in these. And it, you know, you, if you played Super Mario uh, Brothers or Super Mario World, you jump on the bomb, and then it pops off. It's like he kicked one up in the air, and then he bounced it off, and then he has to bounce off the one, and then kick, kick the one up the air. To, it's other like one up there. split second crouching yeah. tiger ninja. What is it? He's crouching spin, tiger hidden dragon shit. He's spin jumping and hopping on top of a big bomb while holding another another bomb. That it's he has to block it's on two an, blocks. It's with. on another unholy level yeah. of gameplay. It's absolutely that insane. It's like the, the kicks the, that up, kicks it with Yoshi, opens, hit, eats the fire in order to hit this bomb over on the right, while catching the other bomb to pick it up. I mean, this it's just absolutely insane. All right, so much, as quick and simple as that was, which was about a forty-five second run to actually get through this level, getting to that point took this person, I think, about eleven hours. It might have been eight hours, eight or eleven hours of just playing that same level over and over again to learn all the things. And you might, I don't know, some of you guys might think this is boring. I found it fascinating, yeah, really, to watch. And I um, Something to marvel over. Yeah, so sure. what I was watching yesterday was another uh, Twitch streamer uh, named Michael1985, who was playing this level, uh, the Bomb Voyage level, and trying to beat it. And he, I think he ended up finally beating it, and he got like the fifth person in the world to beat that level. Wow. At the same time, Pangea Panga was making this level... Or had made this level, 
And he's made all of them, right? Yeah, he's the guy who's kind of gotten made... the most. He's gotten the most uh, uh, people talking about him because he's making just these crazy hard levels. He's like, the Mario master, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. But he's also the guy who was using them, who was modding them before using ROMs, and got shut right. down by Nintendo. But but he's, he's still able to. He's back, and I think he's partnered with with Nintendo now because Probably. he has his channel, and these videos have not been flagged. I wouldn't be surprised if this is like the new yeah. president of new Nintendo. He's just like so. This is his new level undercover, and he just validated this level yesterday. Because if you're playing Super Mario Maker and you make a level, you have to beat the level before to prove it can it. be beaten before you can share it with everyone else. That and makes he, sense. And for many hours yesterday, after making this level, he was actually playing it and trying to beat it, beat it. And I was kind of switching back and forth between his Switch stream and uh, Michael 1985 Switch stream because I was watching Michael 1985, 1985 beat his old level. Right. And it was hilarious because uh, Panga beat his new level, and then within like five or ten minutes of it, Michael beat his old level. <laughs> so Michael, who's this guy? I think he, I believe he's German. Forgive me if I'm wrong, Michael. I don't think you're, you watch our channel, but if if you ha if that happens to happen, and he look at the look at that. That's look at that. nuts. Replay that. Look at that freaking. That's just garbage nuts. right there. He you have to. All right, so you have to start with a pee, the a pow, pee, a pow. pow. You have to jump this thing, kick it off, and then as it's and sinking into the lava, bounce on it, it, spin and jump, then <laughs> get onto the little spiky guy, and then so, use that. I mean, so this is the very end of the level. So this, this is, is him beating it for the first time. This is so calculated, yeah, it's and so precise that only the person who actually made the level could probably beat it. Yeah. Um. And maybe if you're that good at this game, you could probably beat it too, just emulating what, what the creator's done here. But holy moly, I mean, this guy, I would be, I'd be shocked if he didn't work for Nintendo. Yeah. So, I don't know how you could be that good at, at such a precise... But it's like, it seems to me to be like kind of this new niche little thing that people are doing. And like, granted, Super Mario Maker is a game designed to allow people to do this kind of thing. Right. And... I have to hope that the like popularity of this this was posted yesterday and it has two hundred and sixty two thousand views already. Yeah. It was at like two hundred thousand a little bit earlier when we were looking at it. Right. I have to hope that the popularity of stuff like this maybe opens up Nintendo's eyes to some degree to the fact that people are doing this with their games, enjoying it so much right. and and, you know, expanding on the universe and everything. So I d I don't know. Um I, I hope that's the case. We're going to come back to that in just a moment with more information. But in the meantime, uh, we have a sponsor for today's show. Hey! Yes, we do. Today's uh, show is sponsored by Gigabyte. There that's it right. is. Uh, Gigabyte has been sponsoring our show for a little while now. We want to say a huge thank you to them. Uh, and we have asked them to send us some products that they think are cool that we can share with you guys on the stream. And then, of course, at the same time, we want to say a big thank you to them for supporting us and uh, allowing us to bring all this wonderful, hopefully wonderful content to you. Yeah, so this is a, this is actually a great product. If you are looking for... Hand me the for, box over yeah, there. Yeah, of course. This is a great product if you're looking for a super small form factor system, but you don't really have the extra space to accommodate one. This could really, like, legitimately fit on the back of your monitor or your TV. If you're looking for an HTPC solution... Cell, cell, cell processing is awesome. Cell... What did he do? I don't know. We did not tell him to do this at all. He just posted the Gigabyte link in chat. Cell is just on top of Cell's that Cell's on it, dude. Like, dude, Cell... Like, yeah, haven't you known this by now? Like, Cell is like a fucking god. He is amazing. If you want... Cell, you rock, man. Thank do, you for your support. There has been no successful <laughs> Twitch stream without a Cell processing. Alright, hold on here. Chat. Hold on. Um, Let's get a webcam going. So holy balls. Where's the webcam? You ready? ready? Yeah. Do you want to hold the webcam? Just want to make sure or it's no, not. I'll, I, I can hold the webcam. Just want to make okay. sure it's not pointed at your crotch or something. I got this. Okay. All right. So this is Gigabyte Bricks. Crotch. Um, Sorry. Oh, thank you, Kyle. Sorry. Uh, Bricks is a series of m tiny little computers. They're all all in one little units. Although some of them you can uh, pop open and get a little bit of expansion going, depending on the unit, of course. Uh, so as you can see, it like fits in the palm of your hand. And um, yes, it does. We often I, we often recommend little systems like this for like a mom and pop build or something like if you got a if you if if you have parents or something and they have a system that's like five six seven years old yeah. and it's all big and it's like dusty and it's loud and stuff swap it out with something like this drop in like an SSD or something like that yeah. and uh, you will your parents will be like oh my gosh 
that new little tiny little brick system you got is so awesome and everything. Yeah. Um, but you got like you can do multiple monitors out of it. This one, this one has a HDMI and a DisplayPort, USB 3.0, so you have modern levels of uh, functionality and connectivity that are also in there. And this particular one we're looking at, the model number is GB-BXI5-5200. It's got an i5-5200, two gigs of DDR3 LSO DIMM memory in there. Uh, it's got an MSATA socket. So um, de again, depending on the model you buy, some of them you will need to like buy uh, storage, for example. But I find that's nice because it means you can like get a nice, nice little SSD or something. It's got two USB 3 on the back and two more on the front. Mic and headphone jack, like all the kind of basic connections that you would you would have uh, with like a full size computer. Uh, it's just it's just gonna do a good little job of uh, getting the job done and being tiny. They even have like fatter versions of these, like taller ones. They do. Um, that even have like discrete GPUs in them. Yes. Which are pretty cool as well. Yep. Anyway, check out the the Brick series from Gigabyte guys. Tiny little computers. Uh, they do a they they do a great little job, and uh, we've had a fantastic time with them so far. There's Kyle there. Is Kyle here? <laughs> Sorry, right. I cut away from it. Well, it it looks weird time. when it's like the wide shot. Yeah, when it goes back to the wide shot. Yeah. Anyway, and Gigabyte, thank you so much for sponsoring our show. Yes. We'll post the link to that in the description as well. Yes. And uh, thanks thanks again, Cell, for posting that link in the chat. Post. Okay. <clears throat> what do we got next, Paul? Time for Sword Fight. Oh, Sword, sword Fight. I forgot about right. Sword Fight. I forgot yes. we did <clears throat> I'm going to do a little Sword Fight here. What now, is um, both of my sword huh? fight questions, if you guys aren't familiar huh? with sword fight, we're going to debate as a, a controversial topic here, huh? and uh, Kyle and I are each going to take opposite sides. Mm -hmm. You guys at the same time are going to be able to uh, vote in a Twitch chat that I post in the Twitch chat room mm. to straw poll, mm. and we'll see what you guys think as well. Uh-oh. Um, but what I need to get the link. I need to get the link. Ooh, I see it. I see it now. Yeah, let me post that in chat here. Mm. Mm. Oops. I'm screwing up. <laughs> I'm screwing up big time. All right. Uh, there's a link. And uh, this one goes back to that AMD story that we were already talking about, which is the one about Jim Keller. All right. Uh, Jim Keller and what he means to mm -hmm. AMD. Now, the article that I already brought up and that we kind of discussed was this one from uh, SeekingAlpha.com, which is four reasons why cash is much more important than Jim Keller's departure, which is reasons such as Jim Keller always leaves, he's left in the past, uh, Zen is basically done, so you right. know Jim Keller doesn't really matter there because Zen's already completed, a stupid thing that pops up in the middle of the screen that doesn't have a clearly defined click away from it thing. Sure. Register for free to finish reading this article. Guess what, Seeking Alpha? You are no longer on our show. Okay. Oh. Uh, anyway, the point is here, what's more important, people or money? What do you uh, think, Kyle? Money. So we got money, people, and people with money. Now, for the sake of uh, argument, you guys can vote on any three of those, but Kyle and I will have to pick the first one of the first two. What is more important, money or people? This is, this is actually, like... Some, legitimate, some legitimate, like high up company executives at large companies have this discussion, um, like straight up. What's more important, more cash more or like people? By people, we don't just mean people. I mean, I mean like talent. People, talent. people who talent. are people who have contributed to a company or people who. Talent. Yeah. So, talent. so you're gonna go with people? Yep, people. Kyle's gonna take people. I'm gonna take money. Kyle. Because why people? Because people. All right. So if you have a bunch of money, you can't necessarily buy the talent. I mean, granted, you could maybe pay people that are talented enough to to carry out the bidding that you wish them to do. But for the most part, the talent will really sell itself, and you don't really need to pay a premium price for that amount of work. Um, honestly, if you if you find someone a, a talented group of people who are willing to work for a certain price. Obviously, you do need some element of money for that. But it's not like if you had a million dollars, you could create talent. Talent isn't something that you can buy. It's essentially something that comes from people who are individually gifted with certain capabilities that they've been born with or that they've acquired over time or have a knack for. Um, and it's the thing about talent is that it's invaluable. So in that regard, it definitely trumps... The idea of, or the notion of, of monetary purchase—it cannot be be bought. 
essentially. Uh, really famous actors that have like really illustrious careers in acting and film and Hollywood and stuff, they did not buy that right. They were born with that talent or they learned that talent over the course of several years and because it's invaluable, it almost makes it more valuable than money itself, which is essentially just a social construct that's fabricated in our minds, Paul. Which I know you completely agree with, but go ahead and argue against it and try your best. Kyle, I have a job opening. Right now, it's available. Every morning when I wake up, my feet are incredibly sore. I need someone to rub my feet every single morning. No one. I would like to hire you for this job. Nope. Are you available? Nope. I will pay you $1,000 every day. Done. You see, Kyle, Damn it! my point here is that everyone has yeah. their price. That is right. Everyone has their <laughs> price. And no matter how talented you might be, no matter how principled you might be, if I offer you enough money, you will come and work for my company and do whatever I tell you to do. Which means <laughs> money is more important than people because with enough money you can buy all the people you might possibly want look at large companies who have lots of money they have lots of people working for them those people are talented because those companies offered those people lots of money bullshit. money bullshit Paul. and a sufficient sufficiently large quantities of money will supplant take the place of and even supersede the actual talent of any people you want to buy oh that person's like, hey, I don't think your philosophy about this money thing is right. I'm going to go your, uh, another way. Guess what? There's a person more talented than that person who I could hire for maybe even less money. As long as they didn't know how much you were making. Or that person. Anyway, let's see what you guys think. What is more important? What do they think? And uh, this will be used by the United States government from this point forward. Oh, brilliant. People. Good. That's good. <laughs> Although people with money came in a came in a close second. <laughs> people with money, people with money are very valuable. <laughs> that is true. That's very uh, but no, I'm glad to know that our audience has a soul. Yes. Um, thank you all, and 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 all. Most of the stuff I said in the past couple minutes was was not true. Yeah. Okay. Nori's barking. She's excited. good people. Yes, people are more important than money. She's got money talent. can't buy everything. People have principles. They principles do. should supersede things like being offered large sums of money. Right. We cross our fingers and hope this remains true for the duration of our short lifetimes. But who okay. Knows? But but who really knows? All right. Next up, we have uh, one more question here, based on what, what was the question based on? All right. So this one. Uh, it's actually based on that Super Mario stuff that I was already doing. Okay. And um, oh, I was showing people our, our our list there. All right. So the the Super Mario stuff that I uh, I was already doing, uh, which is um, a bit of a moral dilemma, if you ask me, because okay. as as we were already talking about earlier, um, Microsoft, I'm sorry, Microsoft, Nintendo has been very kind of hard nosed about people sharing their content. Right. And we as people who speak in idealistic terms on the internet have spoken idealistically about how Nintendo shouldn't do that. Yes. They should allow people to take the content that they have created and create derivative works sure. or to have fun with the stuff that they've created and share it among their friends. Right. That the sharing of this stuff only helps to further disseminate their brand and 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 their 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 content or their video game that they might be sh trying to show. Right. Nintendo, on the other hand, has said like, no. It's our intellectual property. We're gonna protect it. We're gonna lock down people who are reusing it and that kind of thing, unless they involve themselves in our somewhat uh, uh, fascist revenue sharing program, which basically right. means you give us money, more money than you might give anyone else who allows you to share derivative works of their products. Um, unfortunate. And we have spoken, very, we've been very principled, and we've been like, no, no, Nintendo, no. Now! And yet, mm. I did a whole segment, not 20 minutes ago, dedicated to some pretty fascinating and, and interesting new Nintendo levels that have been created in Super Mario Maker, and that I spent probably two mo more time than I should have yesterday watching, 
because I found it fascinating and interesting. So this brings up a, a moral a moral dilemma. Okay, what is uh, that and, dilemma? And Paul? that moral dilemma is, and and I couldn't phrase this question like concisely without giving you guys the the backstory here. So it makes more sense with the backstory. But what kind of game would it take it to make you sacrifice your video game principles? The video game principles being the ones I've just talked about, which means ideas like I'm not going to pre-order a game because pre-ordering games gives companies money up front and then they aren't put on the hook for like supporting the game after launch or something like that. So basically what what video game franchise yeah. or 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 title would you just bend over backwards for at at Without a yeah. doubt, just go above the extra mile to yeah. to support. And the good example uh, just recently, the good example just recently was would be like GTA V. Yeah. I pre-ordered GTA V, which you never do, despite speaking against pre-orders for quite some time. Right. And got some extra cash money that they were throwing in there, the fake video game cash money. Right. But I got it because I was so confident that I would play the game. I was so confident that yeah. I would enjoy the game, and blah yeah. blah. So. That was enough to make me compromise my, my principles in the other in the other direction. So what is it? And uh, here I've only put three answers, and I'm sorry I didn't have time to put more. One answer is mine, one answer is Kyle's, and the third answer is Half-Life 3. You guys can choose any of those that you want. Right. Kyle and I are going to choose uh, are going to advocate for the ones that we've already chosen. Uh, I'll go first since Kyle already went first last time, which was mine, which was Final Fantasy plus Civilization plus Game of Thrones. Basically, my, my, my MO looking at this was like, if I look at the past, say, 10 years, uh -huh. and I look at the franchises, uh, specifically on the video game side, that I've spent the most time with, that I've actually invested the most amount of my hours, where I'm like, I have an hour of free time. What am I going to do with it? I'm going to play this video game because I enjoyed it. Right. Uh, Final Fantasy is one that I extremely enjoy. Uh, mainly the original 7 and 10 are the Final Fantasies that I played, but invested many, many hours of time into those. Civilization is another one uh, that I've been supremely enjoyed uh, as a strategy game. Just just sunk many, many hours into that. Game of Thrones, it's a TV show. It's the books. Uh, is there a game based on it? I don't know. I thought there, mm -hmm. were, there might have been a game, but it's terrible Maybe. or something like that. Yeah. Game of Thrones is just... I threw Game of Thrones in there because I was like, I, I like Game of Thrones... <laughs> If you could somehow combine those three into a game, like combine the genres and everything like that, I'd probably be like, ooh, I'd, I'd be all over that. So yeah, and compromise my principle, principles for something like that. That made sense to me. Yeah, so uh, I uh, I kind of argued against the um, I kind of argued with the uh, the possibility of having a contra adaptation. First, first person contra first adaptation. First person, I thought it would be cool. You could do some local co-op, maybe even some even some online two-player co-op. Uh, just to get the you know keep the theme of the two-player style of yeah. that game, uh, you could do the split screen uh, if you so choose. I thought Contra was a great NES game uh, when it first came out. What I don't know, 15 years ago or something like that. Uh, I love it's, the music. I, it's super yeah. retro. It's super cheesy, but it's just like everything I love about 80s like synth game like retro era. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's like the games that tug at the, at the nostalgia strings, they yeah. are so strong. So, they were. So strong. They, they, and they still are. They yeah. still can be. Um, I think a, uh, a, a great representation of that game would be like Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Um, super retro. Kind yeah. of gives you that like Terminator vibe. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, an adaptation of that game in that, in that same vein would do very well. I would definitely play it, and uh, I, I definitely like that style, kind of like the uh, the retro kind of flashback mm -hmm. type of uh, color scheme and everything like that. And I, I pulled up chat right now because I know the answers on the straw poll were pretty limited, and uh, a lot of you guys were throwing out some stuff in chat, so thank you for all those. In the meantime, let's look at results. Oh! Half-Life 3 wins. Of course. Uh, by a pretty wide margin, of course. Of course, course. it does. Well, my Final Fantasy, my Final Fantasy Civilization Game of Thrones mashup is apparently is pretty popular. Nice game developers, you better get on that one. Uh, yes. First person contra adaptation. I'd have to say that was also quite compelling for me when, yeah. you, when, you, when you pull up that idea. That was I was like, yeah, I'd go for that. Yeah, I'd totally go for that. It had it it need it needs to be developed by a team that guys. all grew up playing the game and has a massive amount of respect for it. It has to stick yeah. true to the original. Yeah, and they got to stay true to Absolutely. the original. 
and that would be pretty awesome. All right. Kickstarter. That is all for uh, my third segment. That's all for uh, Sword hey. Fight. Hey. We're gonna move on to some Q and A, uh, hey. and we're gonna wrap. We're gonna wrap up the show momentarily. Uh, guys, if you have any questions for us, you can you can tweet them to us. You know what's stupid? What? You know, the stupid guy I just realized is that the Q and A bit doesn't have our Twitter handles on it. Uh oh. You can tweet to our Twitter handles at Paul Hardware or at Forever or Kyle. What's wrong with that? Well, no, because I'm actually showing the Q and A. You can't oh, see the Twitter handle. Oh, you'll have to switch back to it then. I just keep switching back and forth. Yeah. Anyway, also ask us uh, questions in chat. Uh, I also saw Big Johnson thrown out there in chat just now. Hey. So we should double check and see if we got any Johnson updates. Oh yeah. We've covered everything else, right? We we got yes. we did the sponsor spot. Right. All right. Cool. This uh, today is uh, today's going well. Today was a good day. All right. I got no new Johnsons, but I'm going to read Johnson. Noel, Andrew, Keon, Michael, and Randy. A little Reed Johnson for you guys. Really appreciate you guys uh, helping us out. Indeed. Supporting got, the channels. I've got a lot of Reed Johnsons as well from the, a lot of the same people that Paul mentioned. As well as... I don't know. <laughs> Not going to say their names, but... Chrome Paul is said bugging out on me. Chrome's Windows 10 on this laptop is having some issues, I will admit. Ah. Not too, not too great. Uh, is that all? That's all. Right. all. Reed Johnson's. No. Uh, Randy, Randy's asking me how much he, I want for Castle Grayskull back there. Mm. Uh, Randy, I'm sorry, Castle Grayskull mm. is not for sale. Mm. I do have a pretty expensive actual uh, He-Man collection, which was recently returned to me. I thought it had been sold in a garage sale. was not. Grayskull's part of it. I got a bunch of uh, characters over there as well. I'm going to be remodeling back here, and I think I might do a little He-Man setup area. That, or I might... I'm thinking about doing a custom build in Castle Grayskull. Ah. It'd be a sacrifice though, because that, that is a legit, real Castle Grayskull from like 1985 or something like that. Right. I don't know if it's worth anything, but I'll probably check that out before I cut it apart to make a computer case out of it. Nice. Um, the Utah 969 asks Kyle when you're doing another build. Any, any, build, um, any builds coming up? I, I do have a couple builds coming up. I'm going to keep them very secretive for now. Okay. Uh, you can expect a new build within the next couple weeks. So mysterious. Yes. Very, very okay. cryptic. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll be good. Um, I'm going to post some shit in chat. That uh, does include what we shall play. Okay. What Paul and I should play tonight. Oh, yeah. Tonight's Guys, after answer party. that right now because we're going to do an after party pretty quick after the show today. We're trying to mix this up and. Get you guys the after party quicker. Yes. Keep us from falling off the energy level too much. Most likely, I yeah. will be staying around at Paul's place for tonight yeah. and uh, playing a game at his place. So that that opens us up to options for like things like local co-op, um, or we could just do kind of like a simple LAN thing here where we're yeah. each on our own uh, computers, our PCs, and we're just playing separately. I got lots um, of computers. Yes, Paul has lots of computers, as do I. So we're we're pretty covered on All that right. front. But let us know. I have a vote. I have an actual. I have an actual hardware question from Papa Squat. Papa Squat. Asks, I'm looking to upgrade to the 4790K very soon. Do you think I should wait for a pass possible upcoming sale from Newegg? Papa Squat. First. If you're buying all new stuff right now, I wouldn't get a 4790K. I get a 6700K. Yeah. Because it's probably only 10 bucks cheap, uh, 10 bucks more expensive. Right. And get a Z170 motherboard. You'll be on a, a newer platform. You'll get more, more lifespan out of that. Yeah. Um, as far as waiting for a sale, it is September right now. If you can wait till late November, Black Friday sales are something to wait around for. Yes. I wouldn't say wait more than a couple months for, but right now I'd say yeah. Black Friday. It's right on the corner. You you're gonna you're gonna get some good sales coming up right around that time. Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Yep. Basically like the last week or two of November and the first week or two of of December. Yeah. And when you're typically gonna get the best sales on and the best discounts on PC hardware for year round. Because right. that's when you have manufacturers who are just kinda dumping money into right. like, hey, we're gonna give this retailer this much money so that they can lower the price on this, so that we can get that exactly. that uh, doorbuster sale or whatever. Yeah, right. so this should be fun. Anyway, um, Socrates Gaming asks, this is for both of you. Uh, will you both do more medium end type builds or or more for budget builders? Um, this is probably more for me recently because you've done some some more budget oriented builds. I have, yeah. Uh, I will say my build, so I do monthly builds. Uh, my ones coming up for October are all less than a thousand dollars, so it'll be more budget range. And I will be building one of those 
that is definitely a budget range system. Uh, that's going to be a build for my parents, actually. Um, so I'm not sure if it's going to be like gaming oriented, but usually when I do builds like that, I build them so like you can get them together and work with them, and then like drop in a graphics card, and then it can become a gaming system or something. So yeah, right. Um, we I, I do have some more of that stuff coming up because that is important. Uh, Chewbug asks, "What's your favorite Filipino food?" Lumpia. Lumpia. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, we're having oh Filipino beef goodness. steak for dinner. That's my new favorite. My right wife's there. gonna make that. Kyle will be amazed at how delicious that is. It's my new favorite. Uh, got a major soft spot for lumpia. I will eat that all oh, day, every my day. Goodness, lumpia. If you've never um, had lumpia, live your yeah. life and and try it. Uh, lechon is unlike anything else you've ever tried. If you get some fresh lechon with the crispy pork skin, and all uh, that's 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 amazing as I don't well. Know if that is, but I don't know if that is, but I trust Paul. Lechon lechon is pork. It's basically like oh. a, it's it's like the it's like a roast a massive roasted pork, and they do stuff to the skin so the skin gets all crispy and crunchy on the outside, mm. and then you get like the skin and like a layer of fat and the meat, oh. and it's like cooked for hours so the meat's all super tender and everything like that, and it's just oh it's, 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 it's amazing pork rind. My mouth is watering. Mm. Um. Let's end the show. Kalen Heck says he needs a 4x display port card to handle 31440 plus a 4K. Jesus. Ooh, that's rough. Yeah. Um, Kalen, I think you're only going to have a couple couple possibilities there. One is going to be... Um, well, any any card that, that can natively do four outs, and some of them can do that. Uh, if you're stuck with display port, you can get an MHL adapter, which can cost a little bit, a little bit, but that will let you do a display port out and then split that off into like three more display port outs. So then you can do multiple monitors. Um, but yeah, you might want to look for a card that can natively do four outs, four outputs. Actually, I think the Nvidia cards can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I think all the cards can do that as long as it's got the actual number of outputs physically on the card that you that you need. That's good. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, uh, Paul and I, oh, Kyle, Paul, I have a, an 1156 socket, 760 quad core, 2.8 OC, two 4.2 with 8 gigs of RAM and two 470s in SLI. Is it time to upgrade? TO Intel 530s in a RAID 0 and a 1 terabyte green. All right, so if you're on 1156, two GTX 470s. I would upgrade the graphics cards to one decent one. Yeah, to get like a 960 or a 970. Yeah, even. I'd say do your, do your graphics cards now. Get rid of those four. Uh, the wait, what is it? Four four seventies in SLI. Because those were not power efficient at all. You will right. you will noticeably have a drop in your power bill when you do that. Yeah. Upgrade the GPUs for now, and yeah. then wait another year and then upgrade the rest of the system. Right. Uh, your your motherboard processor and all that good stuff. Um, Video cards are really options. where you're lacking. Yeah. You're, you're honestly not getting too much performance out of a lot of extra heat. Uh, with those two. Uh, Larry asks, is the money spent worth the upgrade to go from an i5 Z97 to Skylake for 1080 gaming and normal use? Uh, no, I would say it's not worth it if you're only thinking about your 1080 gaming because an i5 on Z97, totally good for, for 1080 gaming. Like, oh. you no problem at all yep. there. Um, the only reason to upgrade to Skylake in that situation would be to take advantage of the power of Skylake for other stuff like, right. like uh, video editing or something like that. If all your concern is it game is 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 gaming, uh, and 1080 even 1440, you'd probably be fine with. Yeah, don't worry about that. What's your favorite color, Paul? Assuming that you're not a five-year-old, and you had to, and you had to choose. I had like, to choose. Obviously, as adults, we don't have favorite colors because we're not five. But if someone had a gun to your head and they were like, I will shoot you uh. unless you tell me what your freaking favorite color is. That's really the only time that something would come to mind. What is your favorite color, Paul? Burnt Sienna. Burnt Sienna. Very common color. Uh, we've seen on a lot of builds. Very common color scheme. I, I, I would say I would say brown. Myself. Like is Burnt poo. Sienna even come up as a color? I like the poo brown. Oh, it does. Images for Kyle, Burnt Sienna. Kyle, the Danation asks, Kyle, do you think your Cunix is still worth buying? Or are there better 1440 monitors out there for money these days? That's a really good question. Honestly, it really boils down to what configuration you have at home. If, if you're like me and you're rocking a single video card at home, whether it's AMD or NVIDIA, uh, 
I, I would highly suggest picking up the Cunix. It's 2560 by 1440 is the monitor that I have. It's the QX7 uh, 2710. And it's been absolutely fantastic in terms of color reproduction. It has yep. very good accuracy. It's IPS. Um, it's a Korean panel, so you will be getting it overseas. There is an option for the per uh, Pixel Perfect uh, version that you could get where it, it, it eliminates any option or any possibility of dead pixels which is a big concern when you're shipping overseas. Yeah. Um, honestly, I could not be happier with it. It's it's a great IPS panel. I, I get very minimal um, backlight bleed at the very bottom. It is noticeable, I will admit, very noticeable when it's like a really dim, dimly lit scene, whether it's a movie or a video game. But other than that, it performs very, very well. I didn't get the Pixel per Perfect version. I got a uh, regular version. It came with one dead pixel oh, okay. that was in the top left, which thankfully is cornered enough to not really make a difference okay especially when i'm editing videos or uh you know doing photo photo editing and stuff in, in photoshop it's really not noticeable but honestly best 300 bucks i have ever spent was on that ips panel um there are similar quality panels that go for double the amount and uh if you're if you're looking for a budget version of that and you're not interested in g-sync or free sync <laughs> then um i would definitely suggest it yeah Honestly, I think if you're in the market for a new monitor right now, if you're looking to spend 200 bucks or less, a 1440 panel is in your reach, and there's some pretty good options for that, especially with the Korean panels that are available. So 200 bucks or less, go for 1440. If you're gonna spend more than that, say 300 plus, you're gonna be looking at 4K, and it becomes murkier because there's there becomes more options up there, yeah. like. The that's when I start to be thinking about like oh can you afford a wasabi mango or something like that right um, but yeah it's a great time right now to to especially if you've been on 1080 for a while to jump up to 1440 it's a good option over four over 4K because you don't necessarily have to get like a big GPU boost or a GPU like upgrade at the same time to give yourself right. a equivalent gaming performance and 1440 is. Uh, is noticeably an improvement over 1080. Yeah. My wife is nodding her head vigorously right now. She just upgraded to a 27-inch 1440. Nice. Um, she got the one from Monoprice, and uh, they have an IPS, actually. It's, it's a little bit more than 200. I think it's uh, like 270 or 280, um, but it's IPS, so you get the color reproduction as well. And she had been working with a couple TN panels prior to that. Right. And, like, putting them side by side and seeing the color depth difference with the IPS panels, like... Oh yeah, that's 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 the good stuff right there. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dual Light asked, "What is your favorite breakfast food?" I'm gonna go with eggs. I love bacon. Don't Just get me eggs? wrong. If you had one breakfast food that you could only take away with you for the rest of time, uh, eggs are. There's something comforting about eggs. Don't get me wrong. I love bacon, but they're very aggressive. They're very crunchy. I, I like my bacon crispy. I like okay. it very crispy, and it's very salty, but eggs is like, it's like a timeless option. You can't go wrong with freaking fried eggs. The other thing about eggs, you can prepare them in several different ways. Bacon is just like, you get bacon, or you get like extra crispy bacon, or you get like overdone bacon, it sucks. But Crispy bacon. Bacon eggs, has to be crispy. You can do hard-boiled eggs. You can do over-easy eggs. You can do over-medium eggs. True. Come on, eggs are so versatile. You could do deviled eggs. I mean, you're, I, you're, I like I like eggs, but I feel like eggs by themselves aren't enough for me at breakfast. I have to have carbs. I agree. I agree. I have to I have agree. carbs at breakfast. I'm just so, saying, if you had one, though. So it, I know that's what I'm saying is based on your question, which is if you have to choose one, English muffin. I gotta go with. I'd have to go with something carb based, which would be the breakfast that I eat most of the time, like five days a week. Cereal. I have oatmeal. Oatmeal. And oatmeal is just like. I know it doesn't taste that fantastic, but it's like this, it's this solid start to the day. I'm like, oh, I have, I have fuel now to, to fuel me for so long. But no, if I'm going for breakfast, like, I like the full spread breakfast. I like, yeah. you know, you got your pancakes, eggs, sausage, bacon, hash browns. And every time I order that, like I eat a third of it and then I'm full. But having that, having all those stuff together and then like the pancakes, or even better than pancakes, like Belgian waffle Ooh, with like some, some yeah. strawberries and whipped cream on there. Those are good. That's so good. I do like those. It's dinner time, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. I think that's pretty much all the questions we've got for tonight. We have guys. more questions, but we really do need we? to cut it off. Yeah, I mean, guys, save your questions for next week. We Indeed. will be doing a Q and A as well. So uh, thank you all for tuning in. We've enjoyed 
doing this half of the episode so much I've had, I've, had, I've had a lovely time yes it's, it's been very fun hope you all have had a lovely time Love too uh, I'm, I was actually really excited to get these new monitors or these new monitors, Micro- microphones these new microphones up and running so uh, thanks again to uh, Mono such, Price such resolution don't touch them you're not supposed to touch it that's your half of the show people so I don't hear them anymore. when you touch it that's what they get them. It's a mono price. Wait, do we do we share the survey of which game we should be playing tonight for our after party? You were supposed to post that. Did okay, you post that, guys. Before we go, Cal's gonna post a survey. I'm post a quick survey. Uh, we're gonna be after partying here. Yes. Streaming a little bit of gaming yes. stuff. Uh, should be fun. Should have that up within the next. Uh, eh, give us twenty minutes or so. We we yeah, we are really at our end the ends of our rope on which game we should actually play tonight. So let us know in chat. Maybe I posted it earlier, but I don't remember what you guys said. Who knows? It's high roll, baby. People people are very happy with you so far. Oh uh, yeah, totally. We totally posted this. Uh, earlier. So yeah, you did post this earlier. So far, Rocket League has has the most votes, but uh, okay. we'll see. We also had GTA Five. Lovers in a dangerous space time. Anyway, though, guys, uh, thank hey. you all so much for watching our live show. We supremely enjoy bringing this to you every week, and we'll be back again next week from Kyle's house with more lovely, awesome hardware. Uh, thanks to all of you. <laughs> Stay tuned for the for the after party. <laughs> I'm gonna end this. I I don't know. I don't know how to end this. You're freaking me out, Kyle. <laughs> what are you doing? Kyle's just blowing you all kisses, I suppose. Kyle's going to look crazy. All right, thanks for watching, guys. We'll be back soon. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. See you all later on Awesome Hardware. Kisses. <laughs>